Electricity is made by rotating a magnet inside a coil of wire. Moving a magnet inside the coil of wire causes an electric current to flow in the wire. Today we're visiting the Palmit Pumped Storage Scheme, about 60 kilometers from Cape Town. Here we will learn how electricity is produced at a pump storage scheme. A pumped storage scheme consists of a lower and an upper dam. Between these two dams a power station is located. During periods of emergency or peak demand, the water stored in the upper dam is released into large waterways to flow through the turbines to generate electricity. During off-peak periods when customers demand for electricity has decreased, the reversible pump turbines use electricity from the grid to pump the water back up to the upper dam. Coal and nuclear power stations generate electricity 24 hours a day and are called base load stations. These stations cannot be switched on and off very quickly. There are times when large amounts of electricity are needed by consumers. These times are referred to as peaks and are normally in the mornings and in the evenings. During these peaks, quick reacting stations are needed. The pumped storage schemes fall into this category. The Palmet pumped storage system can supply an extra 400 megawatts onto the electricity grid within four minutes of startup. The waterway that runs from the upper dam to the power station is two kilometers long, starting off at 6,2 meters in diameter and narrowing to 2,5 meters in diameter as it enters the turbine. This causes the water pressure to increase to a very high pressure. You could drive a double-decker bus through this pipeline. The two 200 megawatt generator pump turbines are located 60 meters below ground level at the base of two concrete lined shafts. This is equivalent to a 25 story building. The pipe system is built like a set of football poles buried underground. One waterway coming from the upper dam splitting just before it reaches the station so that both turbines can have water. The water flows into the turbine through an enormous valve which weighs 180 tons. This valve operates like a tap to control the flow of water into the machine. The water passes into a spiral casing, which is a pipe that spirals around the turbine. As it spirals, the pipe narrows, building up pressure. Around the turbine are 20 guide vanes, which regulate the flow of water onto the turbine. The turbine always has to spin at exactly 300 revolutions per minute. The water pushes the blades of the turbine, which turns the shaft, which in turn spins the rotor in the stator, which then generates the electricity. The generator motors produce 16.5 kilovolts, which is then stepped up to 400 kilovolts by generator transformers installed in the high voltage yard just outside the station. Two 400 kilovolt lines connect into ESCOM's national grid. The power station operates on a weekly cycle. Power is generated at peak periods from Monday to Friday. The water used for generation is only partially pumped back from the lower dam to the upper dam every evening. Consequently, during the week, the level of the water in the dam is gradually lowered. On the weekends, when the electricity demand is lower, Water is pumped back to the upper dam from the lower dam to restore the upper dam to full capacity. At a conventional hydroelectric power station, the station is built on a river system. The water flows through a waterway to the turbines. Once the electricity is generated, the water is channeled back into the river. A disadvantage of a hydroelectric scheme is if there has been little rainfall that season, the water levels will be low and the station cannot be used to generate electricity. However, should the area have had sufficient rainfall, the station can be used for continuous electricity generation. In a water-scarce country, pumped storage schemes are used as an alternative to conventional hydroelectric power stations. Instead of the water being discharged, it's retained in the system and reused.